Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Gospel Minute from St. Michael's Orthodox Church in Geneva, New York. I'm Steve Toby, and tonight we have a uh, change of plans. Originally, we were going to uh, study St. Mark's Gospel, and Jesus is teaching about divorce, if you remember from last night. Well, I thought I would share with you uh, something that we went over in our Thursday night Bible study at St. Michael's. And we were reading St. James, his epistle. Now let me tell you a little bit about St. James. He was a brother of Jesus, probably a stepbrother of Jesus. And uh, he was a non-believer. We read that in Mark when he and his family were said that Jesus was out of his mind and they came to get him. Well, and we found out from 1 Corinthians that Jesus appeared to him after his resurrection. And that's when he became a believer. And St. James went on to become uh, the leader of the church in Jerusalem, the first patriarch of the church in Jerusalem. And he was martyred for his belief in Jesus Christ. And he did write this epistle to the entire church. Many believe that this was the first book written in the New Testament. Others will say 1 Thessalonians by St. Paul. I don't know. And it's not that important. But at any rate, we were studying chapter 5. And let me share a little bit of what we did tonight. So, St. James writes, Come now, you rich, weep and howl for the miseries that are coming upon you. Your riches have rotted and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver have corroded and their corrosion will be evidence against you, and will eat your flesh like fire. You have laid up treasure in the last days. Behold, the wages of the laborers who mowed your fields, which you kept back by fraud, are crying out against you, and the cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. You have lived on the earth in luxury and in self-indulgence. You have fattened your hearts in a day of slaughter. You have condemned and murdered the righteous person, and he does not resist you. St. James. Well, he certainly has it in for the rich. But is it a sin to be rich? One of our church fathers, and the name escapes me right now, but one of our church fathers uh, wrote a piece on that, and he said no. But what counts is what you do with your wealth. If you hoard it, let yourself be consumed by it, you'll be corroded and consumed by it itself. But if you share it, then that's a good thing. It's and that's what St. James is writing against, these self-indulgent people. You lived on the earth in luxury and in self-indulgence. Well, let's read, you know, in the last couple of days we've been reading Psalms 9 and 10, or just Psalm 9 if you're in the Septuagint. But let's read Psalm 10 and see, and remember what we read in St. James. Why, O Lord, do you stand far away? Why do you hide yourself in times of trouble? In arrogance, the wicked hotly pursue the poor. Let them be caught in the schemes that they have devised. For the wicked boasts of the desires of his soul, and the one greedy for gain curses and renounces the Lord. In the pride of his face, the wicked did not seek him. All his thoughts are, there is no God. And to the wicked, there is God is an inconvenience. It's not part of their plan. God is not in their plan. So they abandon him or ignore him. So, in the pride of his face, the wicked does not seek him. All his thoughts are, there is no God. His ways prosper at all times, and your judgments are on high, out of his sight. 
for all his foes, he puffs at them. He says in his heart, I shall not be moved. Throughout all generations, I shall not meet adversity. Here's a self-reliant, self-indulgent, self-loving person. The kind of person that St. James was just writing about. His mouth is filled with cursing and deceit and oppression. Under his tongue are mischief and iniquity. He sits in ambush in the villages. In hiding places he murders the innocent. His eyes stealthily watch for the helpless. He lurks in ambush like a lion in his thicket. He lurks that he may seize the poor. He seizes the poor when he draws him into his net. The helpless are crushed, sink down and fall by his might. He says in his heart, God has forgotten. He has hidden his face. And he will never see it. Arise, O Lord, O God, lift up your hand, forget not the afflicted. Why does the wicked renounce God and say in his heart, you will not call me to account? But you do see, for you note mischief and vexation, that you may take it into your hands to you the helpless commits himself. You have been the helper of the fatherless. Break the arm of the wicked and the evildoer. Call his wickedness to account till you find none. The Lord is king forever and ever. The nations perish from his land. O Lord, you hear the desire of the afflicted. You will strengthen their heart. You will incline your ear to do justice to the fatherless and the oppressed so that the man who is of the earth, may strike terror no more. Amen. Now, James came from a poor, but a devout Jewish family, so he would have known that, that song written by David. He would have known it very well, and that was probably in his mind when he wrote the introductory verses to chapter 5 of his letter to the church. Now, how do I know he was poor? How do I know that he came from a devout family? Well, turn with me to Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. There we go. Okay, chapter 2, verse 22. This is the family that James came from. Now, Jesus had just been born. A little while before, the shepherds and the angels are exalted in him and everything. Okay, so, and he had been circumcised. At the end of eight days when he was circumcised, it says in verse 21, he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the temple, in the womb. Now we go to verse 22. And when the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who first opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. Now we learn in Exodus that the firstborn of every animal and the firstborn of every man shall be called holy and dedicated to God. And that's what this is referring to here. And to offer sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of dirt turtle doves or two young pigeons. A pair of turtle doves and two young pigeons. Now, from here we can learn two things. One, these were observant people. They were following the law of Moses as put forth in the Torah. Now let's turn to Leviticus chapter 12, verse 8. Leviticus is way back here. Verse, chapter 12, verse 8. Here we go. In fact, let's just start at verse 1 of chapter 12 in the book of Leviticus. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the people of Israel, saying, If a woman conceives and bears a male child, then she shall be unclean for seven days as at the time of her menstruation she shall be unclean, and on the eighth day the flesh of his foreskin shall be circumcised. And we read about that. 
verse 21 of Luke chapter 2. Then she shall continue for 33 days in the blood of her purifying. She shall not touch anything holy, nor come into the sanctuary until the days of her purifying are completed. But if she bears a female child, then she shall be unclean two weeks, as in her menstruation, and she shall continue in blood of her purifying for 66 days. Okay. And when the days of her purifying are completed, whether for a son or for a daughter, she shall bring to the priest at the entrance of the tent of meeting, and at Mary's time, that would have been the temple, a lamb, a year old for a burnt offering, and a pigeon or a turtle dove for a sin offering. And she shall offer it before the Lord and make atonement for her. Then she shall be clean from the flow of her blood. This is the law for her who bears a child, either male, male or female. And if she cannot afford a lamb, if she cannot afford a lamb, if she's poor, then she shall take two turtle doves or two pigeons, one for a burnt offering and the other for a sin offering. Mary and Joseph could not afford a lamb. They gave the poor person's offering. So not only were they observant, but they were poor. And this is the family that James came from. And so I'm very sure that when he wrote the opening verses to chapter 5 of his epistle, he was thinking Psalm number 10. Well, now tomorrow we'll get back to St. Mark and what Jesus teaches about divorce. So until tomorrow, may God bless us all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And you have a good day. Oh, give